So we need to determine the limiting value of this given function when x approaches 2. So when we do a direct substitution for the value of x, we get an indeterminate form because we'll get 0 in both the numerator and the denominator. So that means we need to rewrite the given function. So we have limit x approaching 2. So let's not work with the numerator for the time being. So we have x minus 2 divided by, so we have in the denominator the cube root of x, which can be written as x raised to the power of 1 third minus 2 cube, which is 2 raised, uh, cube root of 2, which is 2 raised to the power of 1 third. Now we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the value of the numerator, which is x minus 2. So that leaves us with 1 in the numerator and we have x raised to the power of 1 third minus 2 raised to the power of 1 third divided by x minus 2. So now we're going to apply the limiting value to the denominator. So that will be equals to limit x approaching 2. We have x raised to the power of 1 third minus 2 raised to the power of 1 third divided by x minus 2. So we apply our definition of limit. So that gives us 1 over our n value is 1 third. So we have 1 third multiplied to 2 raised to the power of 1 third minus 1 which will be equals to, so 1 third will go to the numerator and that will become 3. So we have 3 divided by 2 raised to the power of negative 2 third. Or we can say it's 3 times 2 raised to the power of positive 2 third. So this is going to be the limiting value of our given function when x approaches 2. So here we have a function whose limiting value we need to determine when x approaches 1. So what we are going to do, we are going to get the 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we'll have to do a little bit of manipulation here. So let us rewrite the numerator. So we have limit x approaching 1. So we have x plus x squared plus x cubed plus all the way up to x raised to the power of n. And from here, we have subtracted n. So n is actually the sum of 1 up to n number of terms. Meaning when we take 1 and add it to itself n number of times, so the value is simply equals to n. So what we have done, we have expanded n and written in terms of the summation of the term 1 and a summation of number one and number of times. So this has been done so that we can now rewrite our numerator as x minus one plus x squared minus one plus x cubed minus one all the way up to the nth term which is x raised to the power of n minus one divided by x minus a. Uh, this is 1. x minus 1. So we have limit x approaching 1. Now we're going to rewrite each of the terms separately. So we have x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 plus x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 plus all the way up to the nth term, which is x raised to the power of n minus 1 divided by x minus 1. So we are going to apply the limiting value to each of them individually. So the first one, the first limiting value will be 1. That's because x minus 1 is the common factor in both the numerator and the denominator. So that can be cancelled out. So this can be cancelled out and this leaves us with the value 1. For the second one, what we can do, now the 1 in the numerator can be also written as 1 squared and the 1 in the numerator of the nth term can be written as 1 raised to the power of n so that we can apply our definition so that gives us n which is 1 uh, which is 2 multiplied to 1 raised to the power of 2 minus 1. The next term will be 3 multiplied to 1 raised to the power of 3 minus 1 all the way up to 
n multiplied to 1 raised to the power of n minus 1. So that leaves us with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n. So this is an AP series, AP in the sense this is an arithmetic progression. So we were summing uh, the natural numbers up to n. So that means this value, the sum value will be n times n plus 1 over 2. So this is going to be the final value or the limiting value of the given function when x approaches 1. So given a rational function x cubed plus 1 over x plus 1, we need to determine its limiting value when x approaches negative 1. So on doing a subs uh, direct substitution for the value of x, we obtain the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So this is occurring because we have x plus 1, which is a common factor in both the numerator and the denominator. And that factor needs to be taken care of, which can be done by using the factorization. However, we are going to uh, find the limit of this particular question by using the standard limit result. So we can rewrite our rational function as limit x approaching negative 1. So we have x cubed minus of negative 1 cubed divided by x minus of negative 1. So negative 1 cubed is going to give us a negative 1, which when multiplied to minus is going to give us a positive 1. So this has been done so that we have the standard uh, limit uh, form which is limit x going to a x raised to the power of n minus a raised to the power of n divided by x minus a gives us n times a raised to the power of n minus 1 so here we have the n value of 3 the a value is negative 1 raised to the power of 3 minus 1 which is 2 so we have 3 times negative 1 squared is positive 1 so this gives us a limiting value of 3 let us do another problem so here we need to determine the limiting value of the given rational function when x approaches 4. So by going to usual root, uh, when we substitute for the value of x, we will get the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. So let us uh, do some algebraic manipulation. So we have limit x approaching 4. So x cubed minus 64 can be rewritten as 4 cubed divided by x squared minus 4 squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by x minus 4. So that would give us x cubed minus 4 cubed divided by x minus 4 whole divided by x squared minus 4 squared divided by x minus 4. Now what we can do, we can apply the limit to both the numerator and the denominator separately and that is going to give us 3 times 4 raised to the power of 3 minus 1 divided by 2 times 4 raised to the power of 2 minus 1 which is equals to 3 times 4 squared divided by 2 times 4. So we have finally so 1 4 and 1 of the 4 from both the numerator and the denominator gets cancelled out. So we have 3 times 4 which is 12. 12 divided by 2 which is finally 6. So this is going to be the limiting value of the given function, the given rational function when x approaches 4. So we need to determine the limiting value of the given function when x approaches negative half. So first what we are going to do, we are going to factor out 8 from the numerator. So that will leave us with x cubed, x cubed plus 1 over 8 divided by so we will factor out 2 from the denominator. So we have x plus 1 over 2. So a divided by 2 is going to be 4. So we're going to take it out of the limit. So we have 4 times the limit x approaching negative half x cubed. Now 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 can be rewritten as negative of negative half cubed. And similarly, we have in the denominator x minus negative half. So this uh, now converts the given limit into a standard limit 
into the standard limit which uh, of the form x raised to the power of n minus a raised to the power of n over x minus a when x approaches a so here we have n value equals to 3 times a which is negative half raised to the power of 3 minus 1 so that should give us 4 times 3 is 12 negative half squared which will be 1 fourth so the limiting value is 12 divided by 4 which is 3 so this is going to be the limiting value of the given function when x approaches negative half so here we have to find the limiting value of the given function when x approaches 1 uh, this is uh, already in the standard form so what we have the value of n which is 2 over 7 times a raised to the power of 2 over 7 minus 1 so that will give us 2 over 7 times a raised to the power of negative 5 over 7 so this is the limiting value of the given function when x approaches a so here we need to find the limiting value of the given function when x approaches 1 so for that we need to convert it into the standard form so that is limit x approaching a so we're going to divide both numerator and the denominator by x minus a so that will give us x raised to the power of 5 over 7 minus a raised to the power of 5 over 7 divided by x minus a whole divided by x raised to the power of 2 over 7 minus a raised to the power of 2 over 7 divided by x minus a now what we're going to do we're going to apply the limit individually to both the numerator and the denominator so that will give us 5 over 7 times a raised to the power of 5 over 7 minus 1 divided by 2 over 7 times a raised to the power of 2 over 7 minus 1 that will give us so we can cancel out the 7 and 7 so that will give us uh, 5 over 2 times a raised to the power of negative 2 over 7 in the numerator divided by a raised to the power of negative 5 over 7 in the denominator so we're going to combine the exponents of a so that will give us negative 2 over 7 plus 5 over 7 so that the final result will be 5 over 2 times a raised to the power of 3 over 7 so this is going to be the limiting value of the given function when x approaches so here we need to determine the limiting value of the given function when x approaches 27 so what we're going to do so we have in the numerator an identity a plus b times a minus b so that can be combined as a squared minus b squared divided by x minus 27 so we have limit x approaching 27 x raised to the power of 2 third minus 3 squared now what we're going to do we're going to take the cube root of 27 so we have the cube root of 27 which is 3 so 3 instead of 3 we're writing it as the cube root of 27 divided by x minus 27 equals to limit x approaching 27 so we have x raised to the power of 2 third minus so 27 Q, uh, the cube root of 27 can be written as 27 raised to the power of 1 third which when multiplied to 2 becomes 2 third divided by x minus 27 now we have in the standard form so the value of n is 2 third and the value of a is 27 raised to the power of 2 third minus 1 so that will give us 2 third of 27 raised to the power of negative one third so we have two third over uh, 27 over one third positive one third so that means this is the cube root of 27 which is simply equals to 3 so the final limiting value is 2 over 9